right. I've, I've actually never done a podcast with water. We're moving up in the world, aren't mm-hmm. we? And you, you have the, first. you have the uh, the fancy glass too. Yeah, this is you know how, when you run out of glasses at home and you have to resort to like the weird ones that you the, got the for fancy free glasses. Give- no, they got like for free giveaways. This says Oktoberfest two thousand five. You see, I've never had to dig into my to those like old crappy glasses. I've always had to dig into like the the, the china cabinet and break out the the, the really fancy stuff. Every once in a while, I'll uh, I'll get some sparkling grape juice and I'll put it in the wine glass. I get I get that every New Year's Eve. I don't oh, yeah. I don't I don't drink I don't drink on New Year's Eve. You know, I, yeah, I'll confess, I drink, I drink sparkling Actually, this juice. year I made jello shots for the first time. Did you? Which was also my first time making jello shots and my first time making jello. I've never had. Never made jello. Never made jello shots or made jello. Or had a jello shot, actually. Yeah, it wasn't great. I'm still kind of a noob when it comes to drinking, but hey. Anyway, so, <laughs> welcome to the podcast. Hello. I've rebranded the podcast. I remember. You rebranded it. Yes, it is the Shooting Cars podcast now. It Shooting is not podcast. Let's Talk Mazda. Ooh. In, I was a little scared of like so, Mazda coming after me. <laughs> so you're so you're opening up to you're opening up to a, yeah, a broader also, yeah broader audience. I figured broader audience, broader people. I'm actually trying to get one of my professors on right now to talk about autonomous cars. He's a philosophy professor. I emailed him today. We'll see if it happens. You see, I didn't um, know you you re, you uh, rebranded it because I'm like mm-hmm. I, I was thinking about coming on. And I'm like, oh, I don't have any. I don't have any experience with Mazdas at all. Yeah. <laughs> at, at first, I was like, well, I want to keep it Mazda because, like, you know. That's your niche? That's that's my niche. Niche. Is it niche? Niche? I think N- it's, N- if you want to say it correctly, niche. I think it's niche. But Whatever. Uh, that's sort of, like, my thing on YouTube. But uh, I was like, you know what? Like, there's a bunch of other people that I want to talk to. And honestly, I just want to talk to interesting people. So I figured. Oh, know, I'm whatever. interesting? So this is actually, this is my, f- yes, you are. This is my, f- you're my first guest on the official rebranding of the Shooting Cars podcast. Because the last episode was the rebranding episode, but it was just me. Mm, okay. Alone, right here. And someone told me to fix my ceiling. We had a water leak. As you can see, it's Did you? Missing. I can't tell. Yeah. It's <laughs> not good. <laughs> but anyway, Max, I, uh, I want to get you on here and talk about your photography, which has been going well. But first, I thought we could talk about your car history. What was your first car? My first car. So. And I, I count whatever was given to you by your parents. Okay. Because I, I figure, like, that's what you first saw the driving world right. in. Right. Was blank. So whatever. L- let's walk through it. I'll go down both roads in terms of the car I was given and the first car that I actually bought. So mm-hmm. the first, my first ever car um, that I was given to drive on my own was a 2012 Chevrolet Impala LT. Like, bottom end, base model, no options. No, I'm sorry. That that car had two options. It had it had like a gray sport grill. Oh. And an upgraded cloth interior. Was that the f- was it four cylinder or six cylinder? No, that was a V6. It was okay. I think the first year of th- the 3.6 liter V6 that found its way into that the they V6 still Camaro. Still use. They still I use it. I just did a, yeah. a Chevy Equinox with the 36. Yep, they still use yeah. the engine. They use it in the, no, Equinox. the Equinox. No, the Equinox Traverse. Ex- in the Traverse. 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 They got rid of it in the Equinox. They only offer the two liter turbo or the 1.5 liter turbo. If your car, if your engine is has under two liters, I'm so sorry. The Equinox had 1.5 turbo. Still. It's a, it's a Chevrolet. It wasn't bad. Anyway, sorry, go on. So you had the Impala. Yep, yep so I had the Impala. I uh, drove that around for a couple of years. Um, and then I, I traded that in for the first car that I actually bought. And this was in the fall of 2015. It was a 2011 Mustang GT. Okay. The 5.0, the first year, the 5.0. And that car, I when I bought it, I think it was... Uh, just shy of, of a full bolt-on car. The only thing that was missing to be a full bolt-on car was long tube headers. Okay. Yep, so I, I estimated Stick. the car to have... Yep. How did you like those transmissions? I hate the MT-82. It's a, it's a garbage transmission. So I just reviewed a, an automatic 2014, and everyone was like, yeah, the automatic's way better for that year. And I was like, I didn't know it, because I've never driven a, a yep. Mustang from that generation with a stick. Mm-hmm. So that's interesting. They still use it in in the in the S five fifty. Really? One. They still use the same transmission. Not good. Yep. Even EcoBoost. Even um, I can't speak for the V six or the EcoBoost, but I know for for the okay. GT, they still use the same MT eighty two. Okay. Yeah. Granted, they've done a lot of work to the shifter to help the uh, gear linkages feel better to your to your hand, but it's still not. That great. was my biggest gripe with the 07. People are probably tired of me talking about it. the 07 GT500 that I drove. Okay. It felt like wet garbage. That's shifting. The only Mustangs 
from my experience that have had great shifters have been the 2011 to 2014 GT500 GT500 because those had the the Tremec TR6060 I believe okay. I think it was yeah and then the new GT350 and the R those well, also yeah, have, have mean, a Tremec but okay. those feel freaking phenomenal dude. really oh yeah okay so what came after the Mustang then the Mustang so I had the Mustang for God it's so sad talking about the Mustang because that was to me. That was the one car that I felt that got away, or I like get away. I honestly forgot you had a Mustang. I do too sometimes, and, th- and then I think about it, and I'm like, oof. Yeah, yeah. It, it hits me pretty. It hits me in the heart. But everything happens for a reason. I don't. I don't think about it too much. Yeah. So I traded that in after three months, because <laughs> apparently to me, to me back then, it, that car just wasn't for me. I'm more of a Chevy mm-hmm. GM guy at heart, which I I am. I am a GM Corvette and Camaro fanboy. I'll, right. I'll admit it. I'm a GM and Corvette fanboy. Um, traded that in for a 2013 Camaro SS. Okay, I remember the Camaro vaguely. Mm-hmm. I, d- I don't vaguely. think I knew you while I had it. I I don't think I knew you either. I think, I remember hearing about it though. I think it was through either Kyle or Alex. It must have, it probably both. Cause I, I talked to both, yeah. both of them a lot back then, so okay. probably both. Yeah, so I, I had that car for had that car for a while. I had that car for 18 months. I put, I think, around 40,000 miles on it. I drove that car a ton, Yeah, which I loved. Like, that was the, that, honestly, that is probably probably my favorite driving car of, of any I've had so it far. It was an SS, right? Mm-hmm. You said it was okay. an SS. It was not, it was a non-Wena Lee car, though. Okay. A non-Wena Lee car. Um, uh, yeah, I, I put 40,000 miles in that car. I it was so comfortable. The vis- you got used to the visibility. I-, I liked it. I liked it honestly. Yeah, it's like it's like you're looking out of a bunker, but I like it. It makes the car what it is. Yeah, honestly, out of out of the muscle cars, at least that I've driven, mm-hmm. I would take a Camaro. It's 100. percent So excluding the uh, Shelby GT350, it is the best driving muscle car you can get. Of- Have you driven a GT350? I've not. I'm okay. dying. I'm dying yeah. to. Yeah. I'm dying to feel what that engine feels we'll, we'll like. We'll talk about that in a little bit. But so okay. after the Camaro came mm-hmm. a BRZ FRS FRS FRS. <laughs> oh, huge difference, man! No, uh, it is. It is. I got a lot of crap from people when I traded How? it in because you're going from a really powerful muscle car that can do it all. Oh, almost. I meant between BRZ FRS. Oh, oh, oh there's oh, no sorry. difference there. I was like, well, there. If a you want, trim package. No, it's actually the front and rear bumpers are different, and the interiors oh. are different. I know, I know. Oh, crazy, oh. you're getting wild over there. I know. Um, which, what, what happened to the FRS? I became the reason why insurance on the F- BRGs and FRSs is, <laughs> is so expensive. I put it into a tree. Yeah. A week before was myself. It tr- was it the tree by the Walmart? Um, no, it was... You're not the reason for those speed bumps, right? No, okay. I'm not. No, 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 no. <laughs> it was... So you know where down 87th, it crosses 75th, and then it crosses... No, not 87th. It's not. Book. When you go down Book Road towards 75th, and it crosses 75th, yeah, then, then you go... Yeah, local talk. <laughs> and it crosses the 75th, and it goes over to... What is that? Rickert? Yeah. So I was in the left turn lane. I was actually going out with Alex to shoot some autumn photography because okay. it was yeah. the trees were absolutely, you know, super colorful that weekend. Um, no, it wasn't weekend. It was, it was midweek. Um, and I realized I left my SD card at home. I, mean, I was all of three minutes from my house. Right. I'm like, fuck it. Oh, sorry. Can, can I swear? Yeah, it's okay. no. You okay. can say whatever you want on this okay. podcast. Just don't be racial. Like don't De- you know, demonetize. Don't demonetize me with you know <laughs> political talk. But I don't talk politics here. Good. There. Oh, neither do I. It's okay. Um, it's, fa- it's family friendly, friendly folks. <laughs> Moving on. Okay. <laughs> I was in the left turn lane to, tur- to turn left onto Rickert, and I realized, oh crap! I forgot my SD card. Right. And when there were no cars to my t- t- on the right side coming my way. I jacked the car all the way to the to the right. I put it in gear and I, I took off to go right back toward my house. And I I always turn trash control, control off in that car mm-hmm. because it was super in- intrusive and super mm-hmm. annoying, especially when you were banging gears like I always did in that car. Um, yeah, even the the 2019, I was uh, turning the, it off. Yeah, the GT86. Well, I I did a first to second gear pull and it was like whoa 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 let's settle down. <laughs> if it, if, I was it like, if it detects ah. any any tire chirp, it goes nope. Yeah yeah yeah. Which is good for it's novice safe. drivers. It's yeah, 
but it, we're not yeah, novice yeah. drivers. I mean, you know, I, I am, but... Well, I mean... <laughs> Um, Still haven't gotten track time yet. But anyway, moving on. Next month, Zach. Next I month. know, it's coming up. Okay. Um, I just gotta do brakes first, because it's like, I get brake fade like in traffic. What? Yeah, it's bad. What do you, just run down for a fluid and get like Hawk uh, I know, that's what, I'm, like, that's what I'm gonna do. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Good talk. Go on. <laughs> so. Anyway. This horrible story that we've dragged down for now <laughs> five minutes. <laughs> yep. Um, so I was, the car was, was I was turning right. And I was I wasn't I wasn't flooring it or trying to slide it at all. I was just moving it at, at, at a decent clip because I wanted to get my SD car back. Right. I, I was in a rush, and because I had trash control off, the back end, the ass end of the car kicked out far, and because it was off, it wouldn't catch it. Right. So I caught the first slide, mm-hmm. and then it, it came back the other way. Caught the other slide, came back the other way again. Barely managed to catch this one, and then I finally just said nope and spun around again. Um, Spawn 180, backed right into a tree at, from like 30 miles an hour. How bad was it? Bad. Bad? All airbags, airbags deployed. Mm-hmm. Rear window shattered. Every, the car was donezo. Jeez. Donezo. Okay. And then, does that bring you to your, your current car? So, no. Actually, it does not. So, this was in the fall. I just, I think I've been working at AMS Performance for about, uh, let's see, I started there in May? think it was so a few months now mm-hmm. um and the frs was my card that f- that was for a lower budget because I, I wasn't i was tired of paying for the camaro and it was a more fun car to me cause right because you could just you could ring that thing's neck around corners and it was, right it was so fun um now that car was gone i'm like oh god what now and um so literally the next day i went down to bill k corvettes and classics and i was looking at, at c5s yeah because Back when I was looking at the Mustang, it was between the, the, the Mustang GT and a, a C5 Z06. Ooh, okay. Yeah, so I this, the C5 has always been on my radar, and I've always loved that car since I was a little boy. Right. I'll, I'll go into that later. Um, uh, but I couldn't buy because we, I had to wait for insurance to settle with the, FRS, with the FRS and then gap coverage too, which took literally three months yeah. to get everything sorted with, with gap insurance. But in the meantime, I bought a beater Saturn from, from Alex. Oh, yeah. is that your current beater Saturn? No, I've You've had I, multiple I, I, beater Saturns. This is Saturns. my second Saturn that's actually been sitting in my driveway for like three months now. Okay, I still want to get behind the wheel of that. You still do? I still do. I don't know why. You're not missing it, out. Because here's the, well, I know I'm not missing out, but I know that like when my career takes off mm. in about 18 years, mm. Saturns will be gone. Like, they'll be gone. They won't be because they're made of plastic and they won't rust away. <laughs> yeah, but no one's going to, like, upkeep the motors of Saturns. Because, like, that's the other thing is that Saturn... Like, okay, Pontiac going away, Pontiac had the GTO. They had the G8. True. They had cars that will keep the name around. Mm-hmm. Hummers, there will always kind of be a little cult following with yeah. Hummers. Yeah. You know, any rapper from 2004. <laughs> um but what's that? The sky, Saturn sky. But that's maybe? At, at the same time. That's also the Pontiac Solstice. Yeah. So I don't know what Saturns are like. That's stay probably around. the coolest looking Saturn that they've made, which is probably the only car that a lot of people recognize the, the brand name Saturn by, minus the Aztec because of Breaking Bad. I think. Yeah. Um, oh, you know what? Those Saturn red lines. The wasn't that just a trim level? It was a trim level, but they came supercharged. Hmm. I didn't know that. I think that there's a small community of, of I, supercharged red line Saturns. But oh, other than that, it. Saturn is a pretty forgettable company. And that's what, getting back to the point, that's why I would want to do it. Okay. It's just because, like, just to have that video, so going forward, when I'm like, oh, Saturn hasn't been around in 25 mm-hmm. years, you know. Let's like, drive one. Right. Yeah. Like, yeah. Um, <clears throat> so I bought that off Alex, and at that point, it had been in an accident. It was missing the core support, so the latch for the hood was missing, yeah. missing the the left front headlight, I think it was, and the front bumper was, like, drooping. Badly. But he bought it for a Lemons car, right? He bought it from his other buddy who, who got into the accident with it, and right. they wanted to winter cross with it over the winter, oh, but they never, they never got to that. Right, yeah. Right. Okay, that's what it was for. So that car yeah. sat for, like, six months, and I'm like, hey, Alex, are you want to sell that Saturday? And he's like... Oh yeah, I forgot about that car. And sure enough, after sitting for like six months, the car started right up. Oh, yeah. I got the headlight for it. I got, I think I got uh, steel wheels for it to put two snow tires in the front because they were dry rotted as, as hell. Yeah. And I drove it for a month and a half. Actually, 
So Fraz drove that car, Alex's buddy, who he, who he bought it from. He drove that thing for like, I think around like a year and a half or two years. Not a single issue with it. Alex drove it from the, from the parking lot when it was still cold, literally ripping the e-brake, doing burnouts with it, beating the absolute crap out of it. Never, yeah. never giving it, never giving Alex an issue. I babied that thing for a month and a half. Babied it like it never saw over three three thousand RPM, and the trans blew up on my on my way home from work one day. I'm like, Ugh. Uh. so at that point, I think I daily drove my mom's Kia Brego for the next two months. <laughs> I know, right? A Kia Brego, Bor- Borego, Borego. They made it for one year, two thousand nine, because really? they didn't sell. I don't even know what that looks like. My mom was probably one of like five or six people in the country who bought one. <laughs> That's rare. And she you still have she it? She just got rid of it, actually, for, Dang for it. a newer Sportage. I know. I was going to ask, dude. That would be a rare review. That car was trashed. Oh. Dude, that's the it's other trashed. thing. Like, I don't mind reviewing trash cars. I, you, fair point. Fair point. You don't. Right. I've, getting, rev- I've reviewed some trash in my day. <laughs> I have. Getting back to the story. Yes. Because we, we keep getting sidetracked. Yeah, I know. Here. I know. We we are horrible when we get together. It's like an 80 it, nightmare. <laughs> It doesn't. It's so we just bad. our uh, our individual ADD, like parts of our brain, are just pings feeding off each other. It's feeding off yeah. each other, and we're just getting so far off track, like we are now. We're, we're talking. I know. About, we're, we're even getting about off that. track talking about how off track we get. All right, let's talk about so, cars. So let's talk about your modern, not your modern car. It's not that modern. Uh, it's your not. current car. It's Twenty years old. Your current car. My current car, which I am excited for you to even own. I think yes, it's really I am cool. too. I am too. So. I think after two months of, of driving my mom's Borrego, I it's a Cadillac I, Escalade. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I wouldn't mind having one of those. Honestly, actually. either nah, I would put a huge sound system in it from like Pimp My Ride 2004 and like call it a day. They had them in Need for Speed Underground too. They did we're getting they so off did. track? Okay, All you right. know what we should do? Hold on, time out before you get to that. We should do a playthrough of Need for Speed Underground. We should just stream it, me and you playing. That it, would be so nostalgic. and just like nostalgic <laughs> out. <laughs> oh my God. Like the whole time, <laughs> video listeners. Uh, it's like whenever I see the cover of that game, I all I can hear is "Riders on the Storm" with Snoop Dogg. Oh yeah, the Snoop Dogg remix, which I didn't know was a remix until recently. I did, uh, so I just I just listened to the original song and it's really really good. It's oh yeah, they're both really good. So but like good. Snoop Dogg's like the iconic. Yeah, it's iconic. Yeah, it, it gives I, me goosebumps just thinking about it. I know, it. just like thinking Simpler of like times. scrolling through like oh, on the PS2. I'm yeah, it was great. About this 240 SX and Eclipse. I think actually the the two cars that I touched most often in that car were the Escalade and the and the GTO they had in that game. You know what's weird? I always in Midnight Club Three Dub Edition mm-hmm. Remix where they added Japan, mm-hmm. um, and in Need for Speed Underground, I always built Mitsubishi's. Really. Ne- never have I wanted to own a Mitsubishi. Never have I had an interest in Mitsubishis. Thinking back on it, I actually have some old cassette, not cassette tape, Hi8 film mm-hmm. that's on a tape of me playing Midnight Club and I'm <laughs> pimping out my Eclipse. Oh my god. I put like spinners and, and all that stuff on it. Back when we thought that those were cool. Yeah, which actually I saw spinners the other day mm-hmm. on a, a pickup truck. And it was moving in traffic, and the spinners were staying still. Mm. And like I thought, like GTA broke for a second or something. GTA it was broke. Weird, but getting so off track. We are. What do you have now? We are. Um, I have a two thousand and one C five Corvette hatch with hatch. Mm-hmm. Is there a difference? Yeah. So it's with the C five. There's the fixed roof coupe, which mm-hmm. is the the bubble top. You 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 know from from the Z O six. Okay. Yeah. Then you have the, the convertible. Then you have the hatchback, which is which is most, um, oh. which is the design GM GM decided to follow on with the, the C six and the C seven with that hatch, with the hatch with, with, and with you, the you teardrop have a design. Top. I do. That's why. That's okay. why I got the hatch was for the target top. Okay, I totally didn't realize that your car in a convertible is totally different. Mm-hmm. It's completely different. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because they wouldn't have the hatch, and that is no. a Barbie car. The convertibles, come on! It is. It's a Barbie car. No, that's a that's a, a convertible nine eleven. No, when when did Barbie ever have a nine eleven? She didn't she have one? I swear. I don't know. She had a Beetle for sure. <coughs> hey, you know what I had for GI Joes? This is a true story. It was a GI Joe scale remote control PT cruiser. Yuck! In red. Yuck. Yeah, it's probably more PT reliable. PT cruisers are. I I want to review one. 
I just you want to review the weirdest cars. Well, that's the thing is that like people are, like I just found this lady has it's a uh, an aunt of a friend who I reviewed. He had a Laurel and a Chaser, mm-hmm. and I reviewed both Ooh. of his cars. And uh, his aunt picked up a it's like a seventies van with a I think it's like a Chevy Big Block in it. Mm-hmm. But like the van is like brown interior, but it's a full interior. It full. has a bed. It has like like a couch in it a small like, rv yeah and so i like re- and it has like a sweet like 70s Ooh. paint job like brown paneling on the outside like so i asked him and i'm like i love reviewing stuff like that like, whenever i hear a van whenever i hear about a van from the 70s the only thing i can think of is damn jackie <laughs> <laughs> that 70s show i know so good but yeah no it's like people are like oh like what's the best car you've reviewed and like I feel like I should say like the NSX mm-hmm. or the Viper, like like a um, modern sports car, right? Or, or super like, car. Uh, or honestly, like the Porsche was great that I just yeah. did, like all that stuff. But then, but then again, also like the Honda Beat that I drove Ooh. was just so strange, so it had, quirky. It and it was it was a three cylinder rear engine, okay, right hand drive and manual, mm-hmm. and it had from the factory zebra print seats. <laughs> It was like, dude, I was so crammed in that thing, but it was like, back, that was cool. Back when cars were cool. Yeah. And it was it was a 93, 92 oh, damn, or that, something like that. It sounds like that, that's like something that would come out in like the early 80s. Yeah. Or, like, or late 70s. Um, But like cars like that, I just think are like. So quirky. They're so yeah. cool because of it. Or like like well, driving a Saturn. Like, that's I think also what, cool. like, I think that's what a lot of newer cars are missing is what a lot of the older cars have. And that's character. Yeah. There's not a whole lot of character. I'm trying to think of like cars that like really have character. I mean, I mean the Kia Soul is kind of quirky. I actually everyone just thinks about the hamsters whenever yeah. they think about it. But like on the inside, like they have like party mode, so like the lights like oh, flash differently. See, after working at Kia for like two and a half, two years, two years total, I just can't stand the Soul. Yeah, my the new turbo ones one. drive decently. Really, they do. They really do. Um, but the other that. thing, I just reviewed a Scion IM. Actually, Ooh. I don't think that review is going to be out by the time this comes out, but, you know, whatever I said it. Bleep it. Uh, no, I'm not. I'm, it'll be out soon. The heat um, is out, folks. Just, just wait. Just wait. It'll be out. Um, but, like, Scion, I feel like Scion was, like, the last company that was, like, not, I don't want to cool. say sending hip, it. Hip. But, like, they actually, like, did interesting stuff with their cars. There's to, the, like, because, like, there was the XB. Right, but did you ever go to the Chicago Auto Show when you were a kid? The first time I went was in like 2013. Okay, it might have been past your year. Probably, it probably was. But Scion as a kid, like 2007, 2008, they had, they had a Scion there mm-hmm. where a sink and like a bar came out of the side of the car. And then you opened up the tailgate and it was a wall of speakers. And it was painted with this like metallic color shifting... They had all this weird pimp my ride stuff at their exhibit. Was it an XB? It sometimes it was an XB. One of them was a TC. Okay, it's either an, like the most iconic older Scions or, or yeah. the XB and the TC. I need to do an XB because my fr- my friend's dad had one when we were kids, um, and that's where I learned the term term murdered out because he smoked the taillights and rims. The first time I ever saw a car that I actually recognized was on like Smosh's. Uh, learning how to drive video. Yes, that's a TC. Yeah, and then his mom ends up being in the back seat. Oh my god, was that the video? Um, right? where it's uh, like Ian, you're 15, and his mom's in the back seat the whole time. No, that was, was a that different the video? one. That was okay. a different one. You better pass this time. Oh my god, Smosh! I recently give me a kiss. Smosh, no, 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 like, when you mom, mom, stop it! No, mom. Smosh <laughs> broke up, dude. Did they? I haven't. Yeah. Well, I didn't. Wa- I haven't watched since like 2009. But I was like, I heard that they like went separate ways, and I was like. Dang, that was part of my childhood. Like, I you're know. getting so off track, Zach. I know, so off track. We're talking about <laughs> we're in we're in a YouTubers. different universe now, aren't we? I know. What were we? Talking? Oh, Scions. <laughs> no, we were coming back to. I think we were, talk, we were talking about cars, like my cars. Oh, right, right, right. Back, yeah. back, 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 back. Like way C5. back. Let's go Wait, back in C5 time. Five now. I do. And it has how many miles? So I when I bought it, it had twenty six thousand five hundred miles on it. One yeah. owner car. That car was completely mint. Original tires. Original right? factory tires. Yeah. yeah. 
they were dry rotted and they were super loud and they had no grip. Well, because they were, weren't they run flats? Yeah. Or something like that? Yeah, yeah. yeah. they were. Um, and uh, now, because I've been I've been daily driving it, and my, my new job is further away in, in Orland Park, which is like a 40 minute commute. It now is 40, 42,000. Shout out miles Orlando away. Park. Orlando Park? That's what I've always called it. Orlando Park. I don't know, it makes it sound more scenic than Orland Park. <laughs> we have three shopping malls. That's it. And car dealerships. Yeah, it's pretty mid-America. I don't think it gets more mid-America than Orland Park. I don't know. Like, despite working there, I don't go there often. Yeah, it's fair. I don't, I don't look around. God, off track again. I swear. <laughs> Reel it back in. Anyway, so yeah, you drive far for work. Now the car, I'm about, I'm about to cross over 40, 42,000 miles on it now. Really? Yep. You know I've only put 10,000 miles on my RX-7? I, I know. That's pretty hard to believe. I've put 60,000 on the G6 in <laughs> two years, but... Well, you also drive like crazy for your reviews. Right. For some of them. Yeah. Like, didn't you just drive to Minnesota for one? Not Minnesota. Wisconsin. Wisconsin, okay. Yeah, I drove up to Wisconsin, which... That was so weird because I, I drove up there to do the Mustang, the 14, 2014 Mustang. Okay. And then the owner... He like we pulled back up to his house and he had a an SRT4 Neon just sitting in the driveway. Mm-hmm. I was like, oh, whose Neon is that? He's like, mine. You want to review that too? And I was like, uh, yeah, sure. Like I've always wanted to drive one. Yeah. And the Mustang review got a couple hundred views. The Neon review got twenty five hundred views in under a week. Damn. Don't know why. No clue why. Like it's a two thousand five. It's not like people are gripping. I'm trying to think. There's really. You don't see much content on the SRT4 Neons. You don't. I guess. The, going off of weird cars I really want to review, mm-hmm. SRT4 Caliber. Hmm. So you know the bigger Dodge Caliber, that like hatchback? Yeah. My friend had one, but it wasn't operational at the time. They are... I sat in it and like played around with the shifter and stuff. They're weird. It has the same 2.4 liter turbo. Mm-hmm. Front wheel drive, stick shift, stick... Uh, five or six speed, obviously. Probably oh, five speed. I think the ne- the neon was a five speed too. But you flip the the tailgate up like this, mm-hmm. and you could fold speakers down out of the tailgate, and then the either the glove box or the armrest. One of the two was a refrigerator from the factory. It, you hit a button and it would chill. And because it was, it was a Dodge, it would break after like a month. Probably, <laughs> but I just love that Dodge actually did that. See, that's the thing that. I have a lot of respect for for Dodge recently because they have the balls to make the, the, the cars that they have been. I just wish the, that they sold them. The Hellcat. <laughs> the Demon. The Hellcat Red Eye. Yes. The Viper ACR. The new, the fifth gen car. They're all great. I agree with you 100%. I love driving. The Hellcat was one of the most comfortable performance cars oh, I've yeah. ever driven. Um, they cannot make an economy car to save their lives. And they're making, they're making up for that. I just recently realized that Dodge Dart was canceled. Yeah. They don't make it anymore. They didn't sell very well. What 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 does Dodge make now? You gotta have your bread and butter. Right. You gotta have the fiestas. Durango. Yeah, my brother the Durango is a big seller. Durango. Pursuit do they, edition. Do they, they, they don't they don't sell like the Avenger, do they? No, the Avenger's been out for a while. Or okay. else they totally would have collaborated with Endgame. I think out. their two biggest sales are in the Durango and the Charger. Yesterday, I did a V6 all-wheel drive charger. Mm. Yeah. I, I liked it. I liked it a lot. Mm-hmm. Like, genuinely, I liked it a lot. Mm-hmm. I think they should have named it something else. Because it's, the charger is a V8 rear-wheel drive. The old ones were two-door. It's, you, you could say the same thing about the Dart coming back. The Dart oh, used to 100%. be a muscle car. They shouldn't have called that the Dart. No. That was 100% it's the third-gen Neon. It's equivalent to... Which I think in Mexico they sold them as Neons. I'm not, Don't quote me Do you know how much that. better that would sell here if it was called a Neon? Yeah, because people knew and the loved name. the Neons. Yeah. And it's... Um, that's pretty much equivalent to Mitsubishi selling the new Eclipse as a crossover. Again, another Kill car me. I want to drive. Kill just, me. I want to drive one, but... Uh, See, after working at AMS and seeing all these badass DSMs, Seeing the new Eclipse crossed over is making me just... That reminds me. I, I met a guy on Saturday out at the track who has a first-gen Eclipse. Mm-hmm. First-gen. All-wheel Ooh. drive turbo. Ooh. The bump in the hood. Mm. Um, 50,000 miles. Okay. thing is 
mint. And uh, he's a friend of a friend. He said I could review it, but I, ne- I didn't get any contact info. I need to reach out to my friend and get his info. Because mm-hmm. I've never driven a DSM. Never. Never. I actually, funny story, my dad owned a third gen? Was that the Fast and Furious purple one? The third gen? I think so. So he owned one of those for like two days. Two days? Yeah. It was convertible. I think it was automatic. Uh, it was silver. Right. Um, oh, but <laughs> our Convertible and silver. Ooh. This was in 2001. And my car seat and my brother's car seat wouldn't fit. So he just bought it. Car seats wouldn't fit. So he brought, brought it back, back to the dealer. And then we ended up with a pickup truck we had up until last year. Not, yeah. A I white that. pickup truck. Which I'm going to buy back eventually. I think. Didn't you call it, like, the White Buffalo or something? Long White. Long White. Long okay. White. Which, uh, who was it? Someone texted me the other day, I miss Long White, and I didn't have their contact saved. Because, oh, oh. like, I lost all my contacts yeah. over Christmas when I switched the new phone. Mm-hmm. And I was, like, I was, like, very confused at first, because I hadn't heard that name in forever. Yeah. And I was, like... New phone, who dis? I was, like, what What are they at? Oh, the truck. Yeah. The truck. <laughs> I was like, who is this? It was, yeah, one of my old friends. So. Long way. Sounds like a whale. Yeah. It, it Yeah. It was kind of a joke name that actually stuck. Like, my friend would call it that as a joke, and then it stuck. I know how it feels to be called something as, as a joke, and, it, and it's sticking. What? Mr. Clean? Mr. Clean. Mr. Clean. Mr. Clean. Sh- show the, show the ball. I don't Come want on. to. He's bald. I don't want to. He's bald. Every time someone, like, I, it happens at least... Like, once a week, I'll go somewhere and I'll take off my hat. You know the, the Spongebob movie? Yeah. Where the king... The, excuse me, sir. My dad asked if I want red or green grapes from the grocery store. I love grapes. I know, I love grapes, too. Have you, have you, ever, have you ever tried frozen grapes? <laughs> yes, I hate them. What? I hate frozen How grapes. How do... Oh! You just spiked that audio like it's a football. Um, well, it, that happens it when... hurts my teeth. I got sensitive teeth. I do. I have sensitive teeth. Sorry. Sue me. All right. Please don't. I don't have the money. <laughs> you think I do? No, because you're a Corvette owner. Um, but but typically, Corvette owners are like six, are like 65 and have money. Yeah, wear the jean shorts, man. Not, not, not on me right now. So. I mean, if you got scissors, I, I can turn these into them, but. We are now what is it, 32 minutes in. Let's 30? talk about the reason I wanted to talk to you. Okay. Your photography. You've been growing fast okay. I mean last year I think last year around this time you were editing on your iPad right or you're editing no. editing them on your phone last year oh, around this time it was all on my phone everything is it still or no no you have like lightroom now, I right? I have a yeah I have I have a Mac now and with 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 uh, lightroom CC and Photoshop and everything right. else which I've never messed around with lightroom big it's improvement phenomenal. over it's phenomenal. Photoshop uh it, Lightroom is like Photoshop. I never touch it. Okay. That's like that's if you wanted to do something crazy, like take take something out or add add some some figure in or like it, it's for really really crazy radical stuff. Right. Lightroom is for pretty much just touching up your raw images. Okay. Um, yeah, I have Lightroom now. I think I used the app Snapseed for okay. the longest time, and then I think like late summer last year, I came across the Lightroom app. I thought it wasn't free. That's why I hadn't gotten it. And then I realized, right. oh, they make a free version. What? Oh, okay. And it completely blows um, Snapseed out of the water. Really? So I used Lightroom for a while. Then I got an iPad before I went to, to Denver last November. And I used Lightroom on my iPad for a while. And then for Christmas, I picked up a Mac. And I've been using that ever since. Yeah. Yeah. I think, personally, just, I think editing on a, a computer is just so it much, so much better. It changes everything. Um... So what if what have you really been shooting recently? What like what are some I guess career highlights that you'd say? I don't know if you call it a career, or I mean like you know, but you've been doing this for a while. You have a decent portfolio. I mean like so I mean, th- that's that's the weird thing. I this is like really I consider this my first full year of I don't want to toot my own horn, but but being decent at it. Last right, year right, was right. last year was an extreme learning curve for me. Right, of course. So I consider it's my first, it's my second full year, but I consider it my first real year. If that makes right. any sense that, to you. N- well, yeah, I would say anything. August of 2017 on review wise for me, mm. I like though that's where I 
figure myself like I actually started kind of getting into a rhythm. Anything okay. before August of 2017. I, I still stand by what I said in all those reviews, but mm-hmm. like the ex- execution of them, just you've wasn't you've, as you've good. come such a long way since right. then. You're just right. Like, oh. So I think it's the same story with you. So you have this big portfolio. Like what what are some career highlights? I, I guess mm, I have some big things coming up soon, which I would think would be probably the highlights. But so far, in terms of cars, I've already shot. Um. Hmm. I don't know. I, I really, really liked the way the, the DBS Super, Super Legera set came out. I loved the way those came out. Yeah. I was I was completely in love with those. And I, I don't... I always usually have a lot of gripes with, with my pictures, but I'm a, I'm a perfectionist. And I mean, perfectionist everyone is. is a moving target. Could, You're never going to yeah. get there. Um, probably the DBS Super Legera. And I also really, really liked uh, the way my Aventador S... Was that the red one? Yeah. Yeah, that's when you're talking about Lightroom. That was the one that I was thinking of, because Lightroom really enhanced that that picture of the nose way down low yeah. that you have. Mm-hmm. Like that was like a night and day difference. And it's that amazing. made me think like maybe I should look into it, dude. You you can do like you think you can do a lot on the app or or <clears throat> on your phone or on an iPad, and then you bring in a Lightroom Classic CC onto your computer. Yeah, and you can do so much more. Right. Like yeah. you, you can pick certain points on a picture. You can trace out something else in a picture and only adjust that space. You can't do that on the app. Okay. It changes everything. Game I've changer. I've never used the app or or Lightroom at all. I've okay. never even oh, touched Lightroom. Oh, play with the app for a little bit and see what you okay. think. I would yeah. highly recommend. I, it. I didn't realize that it was a free app. Yeah. Um. So what's what's the pro? Because you've shot like let's just go through a couple of the big big names that you've shot. Mm-hmm. You've shot. The Aventador, mm-hmm. right? Uh, the what is it? DBS. DBS Super Legera. Yep. Um, you shot a couple of McLarens. At yep. the I, store, right? Yeah. So I shot the first customer delivered uh, McLaren Sana in Chicago. Okay. In the showroom, granted, granted, but what other? Because th- the point I'm trying to make, or the the question I'm trying to raise, is like, what's that process of like shooting? someone's personal supercar mm. like are they like real restrictive like they do everything or are they like here's the car i'm gonna stand over here do your thing or like what's what's sort of that process i mean so for me it helps that i know i know the people that i do and they know that i like to do what i want with the cars in terms right. of like where i where i want them how i want them uh po- or not posed but maneuvered uh, where um where I want to take them for rollers, how how I want how I want them them positioned, and how long I want it for, um and so far I've been very very fortunate, uh with the flexibility that I, I've been given with with, with the right. cars so far, um in terms of private owners really they're they're super cool like yeah. I I just okay. I just bump across them and they're they're super willing to do whatever, because typically not not too many of them are, um, they they don't know. The, the process of, of a photo shoot. So it's, right. it, that is also a learning experience for them. Right. So, so they're, they're just kind of rolling with I'm it. I'm drawing parallels between the reviews yeah. and the reviews yep. and, and photo shoots. People are just like, oh, what is this? What are you doing? Oh, right. okay, that's cool. Yeah. yeah, and I think, at least for me personally, I've actually never talked about my process of doing reviews, but like I feel like once you explain it to them, they kind of relax a little. There's like, like oh, sort of, yeah. okay. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I think a lot of people get weirder preconceived notions of, of what... It might be like, like in your case, if you just wanted to say, "Hey, I, I want to put your car on YouTube." Uh, what, what, yeah, what? that's always my opening line because I I haven't found another like opening line that sort of sparks interest mm-hmm. and like or that's something so quick like an elevator pitch. Yeah. Um. But then once they're like, "Oh, haha, what do you mean?" And then I go, "I do car reviews. This is what I do. This mm-hmm. is what I would do when we met like, up." Like you, like, you fully explain yourself and why right, you yeah, do yeah. it and what the purpose of it yeah, is. And like, I, oh, I, okay. Right, and I think you do you do similar because a lot of people think that like I'm like looking to beat the snot out of a car and like throw it into harsh corners, and I'm like mm-hmm. I'm really not. I'm just trying to like give basically like. If you had a car for 10 minutes, what would it be like? That's yeah. essentially what I try to do my reviews of. Okay. I don't try to do like, oh, you know, between this year and this year, they tweaked the suspension 45% in the front. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, it's all raw to you, raw first right, impression. Yeah, it's more of a, a first impression sort okay. of thing. And so, um, yeah, a, a lot of people are like, oh, like, you're not expecting to do 150 miles an hour? And I'm like, no, of course no. not. Like, who's that? Oh, I was reviewing the 
uh, the, it was a Turbo 2 RX-7. Mm-hmm. And that was like, it was pretty built. Like, uh, that was a fun review. And he was like, the owner was like, yeah, he's a good friend of mine. But he's like, yeah, just like, just a heads up. Like, if you take it above 120, don't get on the brakes immediately. Like, sort of downshift and then get on the brakes. Because it, it used to have passive rear steering. Yeah. And it'll get all squirrely on you. I'm like, dude, what do you think I'm going to do to your car? I, like, yeah. I'm going to take it, like, up up to the speed limit <laughs> like like Real really quick. like well like yeah but like i take it to the speed i i don't aim to to do stuff but to thrash their car getting on yeah. a tangent they i'm sure owners are sort of similar feeling to once that. you once you fully explain yourself and they see what you're trying to do mm-hmm. and that it's not <clears throat> it's not for yourself but more um in favor of the of the owner yeah like if you say oh i, I want to have a, i want to have a, a photo shoot with your car like oh, I mean that's okay. Yeah. Sure. But if you if you explain to them like, hey, I know I know this car means a lot to you, and you've had it for a while. How would you feel about having some pictures to put on your wall or on your desk right. or have or have his wallpaper? You know, they're like, oh, I never really thought about that. And I think it, it's a lot cooler and a lot more instant satisfaction with you because you can turn around the camera. And say, hey, look, this is the picture. It needs editing, but yeah, I here's mean, what I'm going for. Because yeah. that's the thing that I struggle with with reviews is that after I'm done, they're like, all right, when's it going to be up? And because I have such like a backlog, yeah. the stuff I filmed yesterday isn't going to be out until a week from Friday at the mm-hmm. earliest. Yeah. So like I have to go. You could see Give my, it some time. You could see my thoughts in like two weeks. Yeah. And like I, I kind of like run through like what I basically said. I'll yeah. tell that the owner, but like. I think that it's a lot nicer that you have like sort of instant gratification, and I think that helps. That it, helps it, out it, a lot. it for sure helps, especially like if you if you if you grab a, a really great roller and you go, oh, that's a good right, one, and yeah. then you pull over after you're done, and then you show them, and, and then and then they get all excited, and you're like yes, yes, yeah. it's awesome. That's I miss that a lot about photography because I used to I started out actually, I started this YouTube channel shooting cars photography. Yeah. it was going to be. Um, the original, original idea was just any car stuff that I did and then like photography tips. And okay. then like, I sort of like come to realize I'm like, oh, there's people that are miles better than me. That'll make a way better tutorial. Like there's no, there's no reason for me to make a Lightroom tutorial because mm. a million and a half other people have done it and they've done it faster, easier, quicker, and for free. It's so amazing it's like, to realize what you haven't learned yet. Right. And so that's why I sort of shifted. But I remember, I, I just, I miss that you turn the camera around and everyone's like huddled around the little viewfinder. Mm-hmm. They're like, oh, like that was a cool thing. I went to Haiti and like the kids had never oh, seen cameras yeah, I before. Oh, yeah, that was awesome. So I took their pictures and then I'd show them. Oh, and like, yeah. They that couldn't speak so English, cool. so they would just smile and they'd go, photo, photo, photo. Oh, that must have been so yeah, cool. That was cool. You, I, th- I think you would really like... Uh, sh- it sounds so bad shooting a mission trip. <laughs> I, I honestly wouldn't mind it. I mean, it's not even like the fact that if you say I want you to, I want you to to shoot this this mission trip. I look at it. As, I look at it as okay. I'm given an opportunity to travel. This right. is going to be a great experience. Like, what can I do while I'm there, and what can I learn while I'm there? When, when I went to Haiti last February, it was like that was one of the coolest <clears throat> weeks of my life because literally they're like the the lady who ran the trip. She was like, all I need you to do this week. Is just take pictures of everything, and so like they like we went there to like teach kids. Mm-hmm. So like we had like all these different like teacher groups, and like they had like this curriculum they had to stick to mm-hmm. and all this stuff. And I just ran around with my camera, and I was like boom, boom, like all yeah. day. Like I refilled people's water, make sure they're hydrated, and mm-hmm. like that was it. And that was that was a really cool experience. So traveling with photography, that's oh yeah, one of the one of the best. I need to. I need to travel more. I need to go to Japan, honestly. Dude, like, when I went to Denver last November, and yeah. like, I got to see the Rocky Mountains for the first time, or experience them for the first time, I'm just mm-hmm. like, holy crap. Because yeah. getting getting to shoot an entirely different landscape to what we have here is just it completely... Oh, it's a game changer. It's, it's humbling, and it's... Mm-hmm. Um, you, you're, you're dumbfounded. You're like, oh, I've never shot mountains or anything right. with a mountainous background before. Like, how, how should I... How should I do this? And I never realized until this was recently, I was looking up lighting videos and it was how to light landscapes. Mm -hmm. And I just, I never considered lighting a landscape. I always thought like, oh, you see the mountains, you get the right settings, you know, the light in the camera's right, whatever F-stop you want, Mm -hmm. click, 
you could edit it, touch it up, but then they were like, they were talking about like lighting, like actual using lights on landscape yeah. photos and architecture photography. Tough. Architectural, it's tough. Architectural, yeah. It, it Food lo- photography, tough. It all looks super simple on the outside, and then you look, you go behind the scenes and, into what made these pictures, right. and you're just like, oh, oh, damn, that's a lot more complicated yeah. than I thought it was gonna be. So, what camera do you use? So, <clears throat> when I but the first camera I bought was I bought actually from Alex as well. That was a Canon T3i. Shout out Alex Nagy. He just bought that FC that was on the channel. He did. I just I just shot it with him on. D- last I know. Week. I was busy. My my girlfriend came in. I know. Town, so it would been an FB FC F- FD. I was going to hit you up. We we need to shoot soon. Yeah, for sure. Um, Pop-Up Headlight Gang is growing. It is, welcome, isn't it? Welcome, Alex. I doubt Alex is going to listen to this, but... He might. You never know. Hi, Alex. Please do it for me. Alex, we're shouting you out. Alex, this never happens. Alex, we're personally shouting you out. His Instagram is a.c.nagy, and his, uh, he runs Tracer Media. I've had him on the podcast before. Have you? Oh, yeah. that's right. You, yeah, did. Yeah. you did. You did. Hi, Alex. Hey, Alex. How you doing, baby girl? You gave him such a shout out. It's only for one person. Um, but, so what do you shoot with now? Now I sh- so the the T three I broke. Mm. The the sensor decided to put these black marks all over my images. Oh, I got and red it, dots all over mine at night. And it wasn't dirty. I I made I made sure it wasn't mm. dirty. So okay. I'm like, oh shoot. So I think the very next day after it broke, I met, I ordered a Canon eighty D brand new. Okay. Yep, and uh, chunk of change. It was not cheap. It was not cheap, and yeah. it, it goes way up from there. Yeah. Um. But I love it. I love it so far. Granted, it's still a crop. It's still a crop sensor right. camera, and I want to go full frame next. Yeah. But for what it is, and, and the current lens that I'm using with it, I love my current setup. Are you using the 24 mil? No. So. Because I remember I introduced you to the 24 mil. You did. And that was when I got, and because before I, you man, we're dorks, huh? I know. <laughs> before you showed me that twenty four, I only shot with with the fifty mil. You're right. That, I, I was the only lens I shot with. Stock you know, lens, screw the right? kit lens. I yeah. wanted to use the fifty, so because that forced me that forced me to move around and, and view different things from. from oh, different that angles. wasn't the stock lens then. No, it was okay. not. It was not. What's the stock <clears throat> lens? Oh, it's like fifty eight. It's like seventeen uh, to thirty five or something. Is it? It's, it's something along those lines. Okay. Doesn't matter. Um. But using the twenty four, I bought a twenty four mil because of you. Mm-hmm. And after a few months, I got sick and tired of, of having to change lenses whenever I wanted yeah. to get a different angle or different perspective and different lighting. So <clears throat> I sold both of those and I bought a Sigma seventeen to fifty f two point eight. Okay, the thing is, an amazing. Really, amazing I remember lens. leaving my lens in my mailbox and you came by and picked it yeah. up. Yeah, uh, no lens cap. The... Shame on you. Oh, I never use lens caps. Lens cap shame. No, dude, how? That that just makes me cringe. You know, I it's... live a baller lifestyle, and that's reflected in my poor decisions of my lenses. Like, the reason it gives me such big anxiety is because I know how big some glass can be on, on the front of a lens. Like, on, under 24, it wasn't that big. But on my 17 to 50, it's literally the glass is that big in the front. Here's the thing. So I have, I have like, oh my god, cover it up. Here's I get such bad For anxiety. The viewers. I I use my camera equipment, I would say, every other day of my life, mm-hmm. right? Because I film a lot. And you do? I, I do a lot of stuff. Look at the microphone. It's missing. Oh, I didn't it's, even see it's that. It's missing half of the windscreen. That's actually new. That just happened I didn't happened even yesterday. see that. My GoPro, oh, you can't see it. On this side, there's a waterproof door to protect the USB port. Let me guess. It's microphone. gone. It's gone. It's under the seat in the G6. I haven't fished it out yet. My camera viewfinder is cracked in an X pattern. Uh, I fell in the woods. <laughs> Adventures. I was, there was a flock of mosquitoes, swarm, sure, um, and I was flock running, of mosquitoes. and I was wearing Nike Roches, you know, you know those shoes, the Roches? Mm-mm. Well, they, well, they got a super flat bottom. Okay. No type of traction. And I came around a corner, and my friend Olivia says this is one of the funniest things she's ever seen. My legs came out from under me, and I literally went whoop and just tossed the camera. Oh and it no! Shattered the back screen. I I've been shooting with the same Canon T two I since eighth grade. I mean, you I'm see, about, like I'm gonna graduate college next year. It's people always ask me and ask a lot of other photographers, "What camera should I get?" Like, because they they always and, they, and then they start listing off like these two or three thousand dollar cameras. Like, yeah. dude, if you can't shoot with it with the three hundred dollar camera, it, you're it's useless to buy anything more than got that. Got it for three eighty two. 
I bought I bought the T3 off of Alex for like 300 bucks, I think it was, and I got two lenses with that. I got the kit lens and then the 50. I uh it was kind of a funny story about how I got my camera. I I was chosen to try out for the David Letterman show. Have I told you this story? No, you had not. I was on Letterman when I was in eighth what? grade. I was on David Letterman. Oh my god. And uh because my junior high had this thing, I was in eighth grade, mm-hmm. full braces, squeaky voice. It's bad. I wish, can, I, I wish I'm the David Letterman you, show. You can find the clip on YouTube if you type in kid scientist David Letterman. <gasps> I'm in there. Um, I'll have to look it up when I'm done here. Yeah, you know. <clears throat> um, but they paid me $200 to come on the show, which in hindsight was not a whole lot. It's no. Like,. But also, they paid for the airfare, the hotel, all of our food. Also, like, they fly, take, they flew you they there, flew and they still paid you on top of that. Still gave us two hundred bucks. So it's like you know, and I remember at the time this was two thousand twelve. Five of us went, but only three of us got actually on the show, mm-hmm. and I was one of them. But the two people that didn't get on the show, they got Amazon gift cards mm-hmm. for like three hundred bucks or something, and I was like, "What the heck is Amazon?" Like. What the website? Is oh like my god! Well, then look at it now. I know, but uh, so I took that money. So technically, David Letterman's production company bought me my first camera. Damn, that's speaking. quite the story. I know. Yeah, that's. Uh, you know what they say: an ordinary life will only li- will only leave you with ordinary stories. Yeah, I guess that's true. I was also in the very last episode of David Letterman because they they did like a best of. Oh I yeah, made the best of loop. Oh, because oh my god! So I was on there for a science experiment, and I was lifting up a fire extinguisher mm-hmm. uh, to because I put invisible ink on him, mm-hmm. and then like the some chemical I totally forgot, and the fire extinguisher like neutralizes it so it disappears. Mm. But I actually this is a little known fact, a little tidbit inside information. I wasn't really strong enough to hold the fire extinguisher. Oh, I can so see where when, this is going. When I squeezed the handle, I like lowered it like this. And I sprayed him right in the face. Oh. I sprayed David Letterman right in the face with a fire extinguisher. Oh, dear. I didn't really think much of it, of like how bad that probably was. Um, but that that ended up making like the highlight reel because I sprayed him in the face <laughs> with a fire extinguisher and he wasn't ready for it. You know that one meme where it's like, and that is why no one will recall your name? Yeah, essentially. That's why you were, you were on the, the highlight reel. Yeah. But yeah, so that's that's the story. I still use that Canon T two I till today. It's I awesome. used it used it yesterday. Like, you know, that's what I've actually for a time I did my reviews with it and then I switched to using my phone. You did, I noticed that. Yeah. And then I last summer I switched back to using the DSLR. Okay. Um because you... I was never happy with the light of the DSLR. Like what the, do you mean? Like the actual like it was either always like too bright or too dark for the video. Mm-hmm. I didn't realize you could adjust it. Oh, because you okay. have to hit. It's like the plus sign next to the screen, and also spin the wheel. Okay, I was spinning the wheel. Nothing was happening. Okay, it wasn't changing. I think it's what the aperture, whatever. Uh, sh- that would be shutter speed. Is it mm-hmm. for video? Yeah, brightness, darkness. Mm-hmm. Right. Well, I mean, you you can adjust either, but typically when you when you twist the wheel, it's shutter speed. Right, but I think it's different for video. I think because I hit the plus sign and the wheel, I think it changes something else. I don't know. I don't know. It makes it lighter or darker. So I was messing around with it one day, and I was like, oh, I can actually change how bright or how dark it is. Mm-hmm. So I, I switched back to um, to doing the, the DSLR. And also, I had gotten a call that the Nissan dealer wanted me to do videos. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I can't show up with a GoPro in my phone. That just doesn't look yeah. right. Yeah. So I, I invested in this microphone, and I have a lapel mic now. Okay. And, uh, I use the DSLR, and if more if more than anything, it just makes me look more professional, mm-hmm. even though it, Doug it, it gives a better better first impression. That that's on his phone. Yeah. No. If you ever look in like the reflections of not, I think the him like him sitting and talking is a DSLR or some type of. But camera. all of his car views are his phone. But then, like, the pickup shots, like, of the interior parts were his phone. You're kidding me. That's what I would use my phone for, was just, like, the pickup shots of, like, it's amazing. Knob. But if you look in the reflections of the plastics and stuff, he's holding, in, like, an iPhone 10. That's amazing how far phone cameras have come in the last few years, right? Yeah, and he has 2 million subscribers. Mm, growing, yeah. He'll be on this podcast one day. Hi, Doug. Mark my words. 
Major fanboy I mean, over here. He's not gonna watch this one. <laughs> you never need to never on. know. Talk to Come the right on. people. Doug ain't watching. Hey, Doug hey, 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 you gotta think big. Think big, man. Doug ain't watching. Doug, where you at, man? He ain't watching. I'll get him to watch. He's reviewing some either stupid weird car or stupid expensive car. Like today he just came out with the McLaren Senna review. Yeah, I saw that. I haven't I haven't actually it's watched good. it yet. I mean um, all of his videos are great. The one small thing of pride that I do hold over Doug DeMiro is I reviewed the 2019 RAV4 before he did. Just, just saying. The redesigned RAV4. Did he was you, like, that's oh, you... a brand new redesign. I was like, I already reviewed it, brother. <laughs> brother. You know what I reviewed last week is the 2020 Corolla Hybrid. Yuck. I liked it. Well, well, it's actually my first ever dual review. I did the gas engine 1.8 versus the oh. hybrid. I'd take the hybrid over the gas engine. More torque, right? More torque because it's the same 1.8 liter between cars. Mm-hmm. It's just one also has an, a hybrid drive. Are those train. turbocharged too or no? No. No. Okay. Um, but also, the you guys should still go watch it. But uh, Shame, Shameless I'm totally plug. Gonna, shameless plug. Totally going to spoil the ending of that review. Uh, the 2020, the hybrid gauges mm-hmm. are all digital gauges. And they like light up blue and the car sounds cool when it's in EV mode and all this stuff. The stock, the standard version, you just get standard gauges and it just it feels like a rental car you know what i mean yeah because you're looking down it's like that's a dial that it looks like it comes on every single car and then the steering wheel is made of like some like crappy plastic yeah i know i definitely know what you mean yeah so the i would definitely take the hybrid over and it's only a it was barely a three thousand dollar difference really so so how much was it going for then like 20 the standard was 21 the hybrid was 24 okay but that's, that's brand new though brand new that was on, on the window sticker, that price. Not MSRP or whatever. It's like on the window sticker. It's wow. like, you pay this. Which 24, which I said in my review, like, that, like, the Corolla has always been something that, like, the masses buy, and now the masses can buy a hybrid. Because, like, there's always been the Prius. And the Civic, too. Well, and, the, and Civic the Civic and the Accord. Yeah, Civic and, and the Accord. Right. But, like, just in terms of, like, I'm glad to see that you know, the masses can now really get hybrids if they really want to. Because it always started off as sort of like a weird niche or niche well, thing. it's great to see, as much as it pains my heart to say, a bunch of different ma- uh, manufacturers now are now welcoming the idea of EVs and hybrid cars in their, their main lineup, not just as a bespoke model. Right. Well, like Kia, Kia with the Nero, that's a bespoke hybrid model. But they right. also have the Optima hybrid. Okay, I didn't know that. Mm-hmm. I've never driven... They've had it for a while, driven. actually. Which also, just a heads up, we're at we're sitting at fifty seven minutes. Uh, I only have an hour of recording on the GoPro, so the screen might go black. That's fine. We're we'll still be talking, because um, I have it's just a, just a black screen and this audio over it. I think I have like three more hours. Or you can you can pause it here and then no. keep going. No, I I don't have any other empty SD cards, and it'd be a pain to oh, okay. empty off. You know that. Um, going back to do you shoot in raw? Mm-hmm. Always shooting raw. Okay. Always. I I have a very love hate relationship with raw. I love I like shooting in raw except for like when I went out of the country mm. and I had four SD cards. I yeah. had to consolidate space. I was through the first two SD cards in the first day <laughs> of shooting. Well, yeah. how, how big were the SD cards? Uh, thirty two. Okay, because so I have a one twenty eight, and I the. Furthest, the furthest I've ever gotten to that, I think I filled not even a quarter of it when I when I when I was at the Rolex twenty four. I didn't even come close I've, to filling. I've it. had very mixed uh, reactions with one hundred twenty eight gigabytes. Mm-hmm. I don't think my GoPro accepts them, which is weird because mm. I don't know why. Did, did they make it one twenty eight in a micro? Um, oh, my dad just said K. He's getting me <laughs> red grapes. Green, um, green grapes are better. They do make one hundred twenty eight. Uh, you're wrong on that. Yeah. <laughs> they do make 128 micro, because okay. I, I put one in my camera and I'm like, oh, it's gonna be sick because like a 32 gigabyte can do an hour of recording. Mm-hmm. So like, what could that possibly do? That would be what? That'd be four hours of recording technically, which the battery would kill itself before. That. <laughs> yeah, it'd be like at no sun. Yeah. Um, but I put it in and it like I think it rejected it or something. That's a I, I shoot with a GoPro Hero 5 Black. Mm-hmm. I need to get a 7 because they do GPS tracking now and speed. Oh. So for track days, they like this is what they advertise it for. It GPS tracks 
the track. Okay. So then when you're coming up to a corner in the video, it shows on a map of the track where you are. Like, you're coming up to that corner. The new Camaros do this on board, but the GoPro well, will do it. The C7 life. Corvette was the first to have uh, uh, performance data recording. That was back in 2015, I think. Oh, really? When they, when they first introduced that, yeah. I did a, a 17. 15 or 14. I think it was either. I, I want to say it was when the Z06 came out in 2015. But it might have been when, when the C7 came out initially as this thing, right? I don't know. Uh, I, I don't, I don't all remember. I know is I drove a 17 1LE that had it. And oh, that I'm was so like, jealous that, was... that you actually drove a 1LE. I, I'm dying to drive Dude, one. Dude, okay. I, like, that's, I think, honestly, I, w- I, I think I would get a 1LE over a ZL1. Even a, well, drive, drive a I've ZL1 never, 1LE. Right. And then tell the me The only reason feel. is, well, I would settle, because I drove Kyle's ZL1. Yep. And um, the 1LE, which was a 17. Um, one hour. Bye. I think we have two minutes. No. I think, no, is it stuck? It's is one, it one H. Well, yeah. folks, if you lost visual, I, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Um, I, yeah, I drove the, the one LE and I think just bang for my buck, it, like driving it fun. Awesome? It's so good. The suspension's way better. The steering's way better. It, it felt more like a, it, it didn't feel more like a performance car, but also like, more buttoned if, down, right? More focused. That, that's what I've always thought of. More well like, behaved. Cam- Camaros feel more dialed in. Mm-hmm. Mustangs feel like they're built in a shed in Kentucky, and Challengers are all about comfort. And boats, they're, yeah, they're boats. I mean, they're, they're very comfortable rides, um, but they're just, yeah, they're lazy. But the the one le. I mean, I just couldn't justify spending the what twenty grand more for the ZL1. No, like, no, 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 no. Oh, oh, for, oh for, you mean oh, for the ZL1? I thought you meant for, for the one LE package. I'm like, what? Oh no, 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 no yeah, the ZL1, one LE to ZL1 jump is big. Yeah. It's a big jump. That for being said, supercharged. that being said, the SS one LE isn't a cheap isn't a cheap car either. It's That's like, fair. It's like high forties and fifties. Would you rather be you know what fifty grand in debt or seventy grand in debt? What at that point, like my. My biggest controversy with the SS One Elite new, you can, you can get them in like the low fifties with everything, with everything that you want. That's punching in in the C Seven Corvette and Stingray territory. That's true, or I, or even C Six Z O Six territory. I really want to drive. Apparently, they're rare, but the four cylinder turbo, One Le. You can. I just. I I need. I've been watching because i work with the chevy dealer here in town mm-hmm. i've been watching their website like a hound to see if anyone has traded one in so far no dice but uh you should ask them about, yeah. the, about the white zl11 le they have yeah i don't i don't want to push it too much i don't want to i want to ask like, him if i can shoot that yeah i i don't know i'll ask maybe i'll ask the lexus dealer has a cayman right now that i'm gonna hmm. ask to review it's an automatic came in do you know what year or anything any info about it is it a turbo four is it the older ones with the street with the flat six flat six okay good. i know it's flat six pdk um i mean it looks pretty like not base model but you know what i mean like not it came as a great car it's yeah, a great car it's convertible oh that's the boxer then oh is that the boxer yeah uh boxer's still a great car i mean any porsche is gonna be good but yeah well in my, like unless unless you get a first gen boxer Whew, boxster sorry Whew. Which that was like two thousands, right? I have it's no a relatively idea. new name, boxer. Uh, I think yeah, I want to. I want to say you're right. And you came out the early two thousands, yeah. but don't you don't you don't want a first gen boxer? I don't, yeah, don't. there. Uh, we used to have a die cast name somewhere around here, but yeah, what were we talking? Oh yeah, the one le mm-hmm. four banger. I just want to drive a four banger. Uh, Camaro because I drove I drove the EcoBoost Mustang recently, which I didn't review. Uh, but, but you drove, you drove Alex's dad's, right? Right. For the, yeah. what, three For hours. the drive back from Indiana, yeah. Yeah. Isn't it underwhelming? Performance, I could deal with it. Okay. Performance-wise, I could deal with it. And this is at no, you know, this isn't anything that has to do with the owners. Yeah. The inside felt cheap. Okay. The really? reason I say that, yeah. The reason I say that is, first of all, um, it just felt very standard Ford- Interesting. But also, I was driving, and on the brake pedal, it kept squeaking. Like, my shoe hitting the brake pedal kept squeaking. Like, you know, like, when you get a brand new pair of shoes and you walk on tile? Yeah. It's like... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
it was like that. Which makes like leads me to believe that it's like a hard plastic, right? Because a soft plastic wouldn't squeak like that. Um, I don't know. I mean, that's just my. my I didn't my, get my, down my, and my inspect pedals, it. My, my pedals are made of metal, so I can't. I right. Don't know. Mine are covered in grip tape because <laughs> they're they're <laughs> that's metal. Awesome. That's awesome. They're metal, but I don't have pedal covers, so I put grip tape on them. Um, yeah, I just bought it at Menards. It's like non-slip, like for getting in and out of RVs. It's like, like skateboard tape. How is it still recording at an hour and five minutes? It don't question that there's it. a cutoff. Don't question. Uh, okay. Don't question. Okay. Um, the watch just go zap, psych. Well, I hope it doesn't cut off at the beginning. I hope it doesn't start looping. Ooh. You know what I mean? No, I don't think it'll do that. You don't think? I don't think so. If there's no video at the beginning... <laughs> I'm so Max sorry. Wrong. Um, God, what was it? Oh, the other thing I really dislike about the EcoBoost and I can't wait my friend has a manual one for me to review mm -hmm. I just he's a trucker so he has zero time ever mm -hmm. um is the gauges piss me off why it says on the speedometer mm -hmm. ground speed I mean it's not wrong and then the tachometer says revolutions per minute that's fine I can deal with that mm -hmm. but why because it's it's being literal Zach ground speed but why do you have to say it 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 seemed like ford had a paper to write and they had to reach a certain word limit for their interior so they're like put put ground speed on there i think that's big size i font. think that's just you over like just not liking a certain car i just car. don't i see I don't that wouldn't bother me they had to put ground speed me being it's redundant me being the geek that i am i would love that now ground if it's speed a, I now if it said that. air speed or but, like Water speed? I don't know. Like, I don't know. It's just like, it. It. You. You just don't like being grounded, do you? I, here's what I don't like, and I'm actually starting to get like harsh opinions on cars because I've driven enough. I hate excessive writing in cars. That's fair. The Dodge Challenger Scat Pack that I drove. Mm -hmm. Love that car. I reviewed that car down the strip in Vegas. Oh. I, yeah, dude, it was awesome, and I filmed the outside of it in the world's largest gentleman club's parking lot. I don't think that review could have gotten any more Vegas. <laughs> well, it, it could if you like if you rented like a Ferrari or a Lamborghini and did blow, but <laughs> yeah, <laughs> off the hood. But getting back to it, the vent inside the car, the air vent, mm -hmm. said shaker, yeah. referring to the hood scoop, because it had the shaker hood. Yeah, why put it on the air vent? Who's like, oh, I need some air conditioning. Oh, I forgot it's a shaker. Thanks for reminding Maybe me, Dodge. Maybe to remind you. Maybe Dodge was like, oh, yeah, remember, this car's a shaker hood. Or or at Iron Gate, going, kicking it way back, there was an old, uh, I'm going to mess this up, Pontiac, I think it was a Firebird, the old, literally from Smokey and the Bandit. Uh, Trans Am. Trans Am. And I was I looking Firebird, at the car. Trans Am, one of the two. What, yeah, one of the two. Oh, oh, it's, oh. The GoPro's officially off, guys. It, it did. Um, we're officially audio only. Um... I can stop flexing my right arm, show the muscles off. Um, it said on the door handle, four wheel discs. Yes, I remember seeing that. I and you remember me getting mad about it. Don't I remember. You? I remember. No, I, don't, I don't remember that. I do. I remember um, Arnie, one of the one of the uh, uh, former AMS owners. Uh, has what has an actual smoking in the bandit really? Trans Am, yeah, and doesn't have it. I remember seeing that on the door handle. Yes, it's just it pisses because it's like it's like the weirdest of flexes. You know what I mean? Like it's like why do you have to say? It's like if I went out to my G six and sharpied four airbags on the door handle. It's like who's like grabbing or, for the door handle and they see oh, four wheel discs or in your RX seven having like uh, no airbag. Excuse me, like no airbags right. labeled on somewhere on the interior. Labeled, stitch into the seats. Stitch, it, like, yes, that's how I feel go. about it. It's or, like, or the why, headliner. Right. Why have, why have more words than you need? And I, going on the flip side of this, I hate it when they under label the coolant gauges. It's just, dude, I hate it. Like some cars. You have some weird hate. I know. Zach. They don't even give it digits, it's just like a range. But I, what did I drive recently? Shoot. I wanted to ask you something, but you're going off on a tangent. I know. I'm going off right <laughs> you're now. You're going way there's, off on a there's tangent. There's no stop in this the freight train. Um, I drove the Subaru Forester. Okay. Had the temperature gauge, mm -hmm. and it was sitting right in the middle. Yep. And it said, temperature, good. 
That is so smart for dumb people. Because people are like, well, well, if they see like 215 on the dash, they're like, is it supposed to be 215? Like, well, normally okay. there's, there's a warning blaring on your dashboard if That's your car's fair. overheating. But like, think about it like, well, you're obviously a car guy. But like, what does your Saturn sit at normally? I have no idea. Right. So I, it's like, what's good? So like, if I said, I know what the Corvette sits at, I don't, I don't know what the Saturn because you at. track it. That, that well, I, I have saying. to eyeball the coolant gauge. <laughs> I know, know me too. I know exactly my my RX seven exactly idles at one ninety four. It's funny because exactly my my coolant gauge doesn't 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 budge on track, but my oil skyrockets. Really? That's oh yeah. Um, but yeah, I just and dude, going off on a major tangent, the twenty twelve Mazda Speed three that I had for a week. Uh huh. Didn't even have a coolant gauge. Yeah, a lot of cars don't anymore. It, it, That's it, a performance it, it car. Just, it just has like a, a gauge that tells you if, if your if your coolant's still cold. This one just had a light. It was a blue cool. Uh, yeah, and, and it'll, light, it'll turn it off, off when your coolant's warm. Yeah, but like, how warm is that? Does that mean as soon as it like is off, I can bang? There's it off no rev there's limit? no indication of any anything going wrong. And so I'm like. So I was thinking, like, th- this was my friend's car. Mm-hmm. And he was out of town, so I had it for the week. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, and I would start it up, and, like, w- as soon as the light would turn off, I'm like, all right, can I, like, it was running 21 pounds of boost. So I was like. Oh, God. I was like, can I get into boost now? Or not? Should I not? Because I don't want to <laughs> blow it up. Like, yeah. that would be the worst thing ever. I mean, my, at that point, you, 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 should, you should worry more about the oil temperature in turbo cars, but. Right, but still, like I, I just wish I knew. Yeah. So that that's my tangent for the night. What were you gonna say? I was gonna ask you because you were going off on about the Ford interior. Mm. How would you compare the the S five fifty Mustang interior to to that SS one LE interior? SS. Oh, the. Because people have always bashed Chevy, like the C six and the and the fifth gen Camaros having god awful interiors. I don't think. And Ford always having the upper hand on it. To be fair. I don't think that any American car really has a solid interior. Okay. Besides would... Cadillac. Have you driven a C7 Corvette? I have not. You, you. Okay. I think that has a very. Okay. That's not. I'm not being a fanboy. I'm, I'm just. Passionate. No, no, no. Yeah. But I, I, I seriously think the C7 Corvette has a great interior, especially, especially compared to how far that interior has come since the C5 and the C6. I think, in all of my experience, excluding. 90s luxury mm-hmm. cars. Uh, I think the Lincoln Mark VIII that I drove really nailed the interior. Okay. I think the Mercury... For what that car was back then, yeah. Right. That car um, was so comfortable. So good. Um, but I, I don't think any modern American car is up to the standards of nice Japanese or European cars. It's funny because uh, there's there was only a two-year build difference between my Camaro and the Sign FRS. And then I remember whenever I, I would close the door on the Camaro, it was always a... <laughs> There's always some rattle there. Yeah. Because, like, that, this cheap plastic like rattle in it, and the FRS always goes with the funk. But comparing. There was just, it just felt so much more solid and so much better, better put together. That's tough. See, comparing the Mustang to the 1LE, I would have to say, well, it's also, it can't be fair because the Mustang I did drive was a base model. Alex's okay. dad is a. Not his dad. His dad's Mustang. His dad's a base model. <laughs> bro, your dad's a base model, bro. <laughs> My dad's an SDL. <laughs> Show. My dad's an LT, bro. You don't even know. Um, it's just like barely over base. Uh, it's still over base, though. <laughs> barely. Um, yeah, I, I would take the Camaro, 100%. I mean, but I also, like, it had, if I remember, I think it had a suede shifter. Yeah, they did. It, was it, had, nice. it had, had a, as the one LEs always have the suede seats, the suede wheel, and, and the suede shifter with the and suede. And people boot. complain about it, but I really like that in the one LE, the whole vent is how you crank and it up. People are and down. so freaking picky. Like, I think thing. that it's, it's great. It's I think one it's great too. Knob. It's yeah. one less knob to worry about. The vent's going to be there anyway. You're saving space. Right. What's wrong with that? People, uh, what were? Oh, it was the I did a 2019 Blazer. I actually filmed that one before they released it on sale, which was cool. Really? Yeah, that was but cool. was that, that before, was, cool was that before Doug Demiro too? He still hasn't done one. Oh, so that's two cars. Yes. It's two cars you got two Doug cars. Demiro. Two cars. I mean, you know, he also hasn't done like an FBR X7. Like Has that. he done a C5 Corvette? I don't know. I think 
Doug, yeah. have you? Doug? Doug? Who's that watching? Doug, have you had... Doug? Doug, now down here. We don't have video anymore. Doug will be down here. Hey, Doug, have you ever driven a C5 Corvette? Yeah, Doug, get back to us. Um, <laughs> yeah. Shout out at Doug DeMiro. But going back to it, I know I'm going to get flack for it that I don't think... I think American cars can have nice interiors. They've come a long, long They've way. They've come a long way. I just don't... I just think that their foreign competitors are... From what I've driven, again, in my... What I've driven like two hundred ninety different cars. Mm-hmm. In my history, I've just always felt that like a BMW or an Infiniti has a nicer interior than a Chevy it's, or. It's interesting because like I feel like, you know what Cadillac I'm switching on though. What I sat in the the brand new CTS V mm-hmm. at the auto show the twenty nineteen. I've driven one. Really? Oh yeah. I love the Dude. exterior. I think it looks great. The interior they haven't updated. And it looks identical to my grandparents' 2013 Cadillac SRX. They've done a fair amount, but the overall design is the like especially especially Q. The Q yeah. like just doesn't work. It yeah. doesn't work. And that's that's another thing that I'm excited for is Apple CarPlay, because I've been driving like the Toyotas. I think are just now getting it. It, it's staring Mazda at a lot is of cars coming now. around. It's crazy. Kia has it. Mm-hmm. Uh, Chevy has it. Mm-hmm. Almost everyone has it. I think personal info- infotainment systems like Q or like uh, was it MyLink or something? No, what is MyLink it? was for Chevy. Yeah, MyLink, um, Sync by for Microsoft Ford. or yep. Ford. I think all of that's going to go away. I, I yeah. really do. And I think it would Apple CarPlay or yeah. Android Auto is just going to take over, and it's just going to solve. That would all solve so many problems. Because, and the other thing is, is that it's helpful because you know I get into all these new cars, mm-hmm. and it's like, how do I work the radio? How do I even like? That's a, fair. Yeah, plug I, your I see phone what you're getting in. Out. It's yeah. the same. It's the same in the Kia Soul as mm-hmm. it is in the BMW M5. You just get in and go. You get in. Your apps are there. It's it. I I, I do think that that's going to be a trend that we'll see is that personal infotainment systems like from thank god my friend rod it's, i'm just going off on another tangent my friend rod told me he's like you really have a hate boner for the a hate Ma- a hate boner i've never heard that one yeah, before for the mazda infotainment system because i don't shut up about how horrible it is i love oh, mazda god. cars with a passion obviously that's i don't know why have I you looked at the camera that's not recording oh. I love Mazda cars with passion. I'll always own a Mazda. But their, their infotainment, infotainment system is absolute garbage. You obviously, absolute garbage. You obviously haven't driven an old Kia with the old infotainment system. You could, like, for me... What was it, like a fucking Game Boy Color? For me, you could, like, you would press the screen for a command and my, my hair would grow back before it would respond. That's tough. That's yeah, and that, that says something. Oh, yeah, I don't know. The other thing I hate, I really dislike about Chevys... So you can't turn off auto start stop. You can. Not in any of the cars that I've been able to find. Not in the Malibu. Not in the Blazer. Not in the Equinox. Then you don't. You've been pressing the wrong buttons, my friend. Well, there's no button for. It. Where is it? I've gone through all the settings in the center screen. There has like. I know. I I used to work for a, for a Chevy dealership when the new Malibu came out, and I remember I had to drive one down the street, and it never never came on. Shook the whole table. Maybe it's maybe it's in the driving modes. I don't know. But I know there is a way. Like there, there is there has to be a way in every car to turn it off. It also it doesn't trigger unless you go above thirty miles an hour. That could have been it. Because yeah. on the test track, because I I film on the test track, mm-hmm. I'll be driving to the review, and it'll it'll do it. But on the test track, I never really exceed thirty miles an hour except for after my first pull. Mm-hmm. So it never kicks back on. So like it well it never kicks back off is what I should say. Yeah. BMW has a dedicated button to turn it off. Porsche has a, bu- a bunch button. of a bunch of everyone bunch of has cars dedicated deal. buttons. Mm-hmm. Our Mazda doesn't even have the feature of auto start stop. McLaren does, Lamborghini does, so then really? Ford. Yeah, really? yeah. yeah. The, Lam- the new Lamborghini Aventador S has stop start. I used to hate that feature a lot more until someone did bring it to my attention because I am stupid. Um, that it's more so to cut down on greenhouse gases mm-hmm. and than, than, than it is fuel economy. Yeah. Right. I always thought that is fuel economy, and I'm like, that is stupid. I there's no way that that increases fuel economy, but it's if you think about it, it decreases the amount of fuel you use, and it and it it, dec- it decreases the the greenhouse gases you you produce when you're not actually right. in motion. When you're if you think about it, if everyone shut off their engines in a traffic jam, that would save a lot. 
around the world. One car might not make much of a difference, but if you add right. millions of cars... So it makes more sense to me. I still think it's intrusive and annoying. I completely agree. And I agree. It's also worrying, I've said this in multiple reviews, where I come from the background of when my RX-7 shuts off in traffic... It's broken. That's my whole day. My whole day is pushing it off to the side, popping the hood, getting under it while cars are whizzing by, mm-hmm. either calling a tow truck or f- trying to fix it on the side of the road. Like, that's my... Like, if my car shuts off in traffic, I'm like, well, there's my afternoon. <laughs> yep. And so I'll be driving, even a new car, and it, I'll pull up to a light and it shuts off. I'm like, there's a small part of me that's like, God you're damn screwed. It. Yeah. So... You and these <sighs> weird quirks, man. Yeah, I have a, a lot of little, small, personal grievances, but you I see, think for every me, automotive journalist does. For me, I think I focus more on the driving experience than I do on the little itty, itty-bitty controls. I mean, that's why I, I tend to buy and drive more driver, driver-focused driver cars. Like, I think the most surprising car I drove last year, I, I do have to say, was the AMG GT convertible. I drove that at, at, at Autobahn. Really? Oh my! I was behind one in traffic today. Those things are nice. Oh, it was the hard top, though. It was when that car came out. I thought it looked pretty. It looked cool, but it looked bland. It wasn't an SLS. You know that I think the SLS is on a, is on a pedestal, especially the black edition that will never be recreated right. or or have a car come close. But I drove it, and I'm like, that it's really really quick. There's almost zero turbo lag. The right. transmission is phenomenal. It sounds great. Yeah. It, it dry, it, I've never driven a performance. I've never driven an AMG. Oh, dude, I drove a so CLK 550 with the AMG package. Uh, so it was exhaust not the and same. wheels and not, brakes. Not the same. But yeah, it's not the same. They're um, so good, dude. But going back, I, I do understand. I do, I do look for the driving feel mm-hmm. of cars. That's all I look for, honestly. But I, I just don't have really harsh opinions on it because I know, I know what I like, mm-hmm. and like the rest can kind of screw off. Everyone's you know different, I mean? though. I mean, and uh, but the one thing I, I've been wanting to re-review the E forty six M three. Okay. Because I recently learned a phrase. It's called fictive kin. Are you aware of this? No. Okay. I'm not. I'm not. So the idea of fictive kin is, it's like someone that you consider family that's a friend. Okay. So like you know someone that like you always. You, I think I'm sure you can brother think from of, another mother. Right. You could think of someone yeah. when that comes to mind. Yeah. And I, I really do think that that sort of explains the the driving experience I had with the M3. Okay. Is that as soon as I got into it, I didn't even realize it until, like, I was already doing it. I was driving it, and I was driving it kind of kind of leaned back, driving with one finger, just shifting, mm-hmm. rev matching almost perfectly. Mm-hmm. I mean, of course, there's going to be a blip here and oh, there. Yeah. I, I mess up de- rev matching my own car. But, like... Everything felt perfect, and it felt like I had been driving an M3 for the last 15 years of my life. It just, it comes on you that quick, huh? And at the end of the video, I was like, I was like so relaxed. Like, normally when I'm, I'm reviewing cars, I'm a little tense, just because like, I don't want anything to happen to the car. Yeah. Because like, obviously. It's not your car, yeah. Yeah, it's not my car. Understandable. And you, you gotta be like, watching out for traffic, and I, I never turn on red lights when I'm doing reviews. I never okay. take a right turn, because... Someone could come flying, whatever. Yep. But, like, when I was driving the M3, I was, like, rev matching. I was just, like, kind of cruising, chilling, and I was, like... The car, the car felt, felt like an old friend to you. Yeah. Yeah. And so that's why... That's a driving experience that, like, really, really kind of fits... FCs are like that, too. Really? I can get into any FC. Granted, I owned one for three days. <laughs> I had one for three days. That was enough. Well, I, I only drove it for two hours because <laughs> it was to oh, pull the that, motor. Oh, that was the your donor car, right? Yeah, I okay. bought it up in Bridgeview and drove it down. Yeah, yeah, I remember that, story that was now, the yeah. only time I drove it. But like, I'll get in the, I'll get behind the wheel of an FC, and it's just like it all comes flooding back, which is weird because that doesn't happen with FBs. Weird. You would think because I've put ten thousand miles on my own personal FB. Mm-hmm. I drove. I guess to be fair, I did drive an automatic one. Okay. But it was like, it just, everything seemed foreign. And hmm. like, it also did have a 12A and I have the 13B. And that has a lot to do with it. And it was automatic. and But like, I don't know, just like driving it, like I didn't feel as comfortable as, but like I'll, like I'm going to review Alex's FC. FC coming up 
for the sole purpose of now that I do backseat reviews and everything, I'm doing a backseat review. Oh my gosh. In his FC. I don't have backseats for you, sorry. All good. Um, but I do want to film your Corvette at some point. Yeah, dude, because... you do. I will definitely let you. Yeah. It's just I, I, I figured out what what that what the, what the rear noise is. I need I need new axles. Oh, okay. Uh, front or rear? Rear. Okay. Front axles, bro. Oh, bro. Okay. Rear drive, bro. Well, you got like some type of shafts up there, right? My, Nothing. My steering rack. Oh. Yeah. Bro. Yeah. That was dumb, huh? <laughs> on your own, on your own <laughs> podcast. On my own podcast. It's all right. If people have listened an hour and twenty four minutes in, <laughs> they deserve it. Um. But yeah, you the. I'm interested to actually drive your Corvette. Mm-hmm. I drove it just around the top of that parking garage one that night. Now, yeah. Um, I'm interested to see how I like it because first of all, it's going to be a lot less powerful than the Corvette that I drove, the Z06. Yep. And so I'm not going to be terrified to drive it, which be. I think is huge. No. Also, going to be honest, I've never really been a fan of Corvettes. I've always thought that they were sort of basic. It's hit or miss. Like it, it's uh, they're really. So, I'm I'm just genuinely interested to yeah. see what it. it I might, dude. I might fall in love with it. I think you'll I'm like it. I really think you do. You, yeah. you might. Um, I the way it handles, I describe it as a big FRS. The way mine handles, okay. I lo- and and still on, keep, mind you, it's still on stock suspension. I, okay. I love it. Really. I, I I have so much confidence in that car. The reason well, you actually track it, and I think that's huge, that you have that much confidence in it. You know, sure. not that it's like... I do, I, yeah, I, I get what you mean. I get yeah. what you mean. It's like that takes a certain sort of kinship of over your car. Like, I can, I can toss that car sideways and undry pavement and not even sweat. Like, right. I, I can just correct it and bring it back. Yeah. You don't have compressed wood in your chassis, do you? No. The compressed. C6s do. What? It's carbon fiber with compressed wood in between. On what car? The C6s. Where? In like the floorboards. You've never heard of this? No, this is all news to me. What? So the owner of the Z06 and... I don't know if he's just pulling your leg or no, this is I've actually No, I've heard it because Kyle told me this too. What? Without me prompting then, him. Then it must. I don't know. Um, it's a compressed, I want to say balsa wood or something. It's real thin. Probably but, balsa would make sense. But it's compressed in between, it's sandwiched in between carbon fiber. But it's just because the wood is so light, but when compressed, it's super carbon rigid. Fiber. Yeah. The first Corvette er, I ever knew to use carbon fiber was the C6 ZR1. Because that had a carbon hood, carbon fenders. When you go home, look up wood. I know that there's wood in the chassis. I don't know if it's smashed between carbon fiber. Maybe it's know. fiberglass? Fiberglass would make more sense. It's smushed in between something. There's Because the owner of this uh, Z06 said if you were to drill a hole through the bottom, there would be a small slice of wood. Didn't know I was driving kind of like a, a Morgan hybrid. Well, I don't. I don't know if that's for the C5. <laughs> I don't like. That's so weird. You do have a torque what? tube, right? Though. Yeah, yeah. Torque tube. C. I think I don't know if it, I, I. I should know, but I. I don't know if the C4s were transaxles, but the C5s and up okay. were, were transaxles. But engine in the front, trans in the back. And it's a five seven. Five point seven liter. Yep. Okay. The, all all C5s had the five seven, but the base car had the LS one. And the LS6, or the Z06 had the LS6, which had a different cam and different heads. Yeah. I, I I wish that the Toyota dealer would let me do it. They had a base model C6. Ooh. And I really wanted to drive that because I'm supposed to drive the ZR1 this summer. So really? I, I wanted to get, like, the three stages. Okay. But Toyota, they had it inside their showroom. And they're like, it would be a pain to bring it outside. Oh, it's in a showroom? To, yeah, they would have to rearrange the whole showroom see, to get the I, car out. The only shifts for me would bring their cars out of the showrooms for me to photograph. I mean, see, I, don't, I don't really struggle with that. They took the Blazer out of the showroom for Did me. Did they? Oh, yes. okay. Yeah, they literally, I was like, I because it was so new when I filmed it. I was like, there's none on the lot. Like, I was like, they know I'm coming, right? Like, I, all this stuff. Yeah, and there's yeah. one in the showroom in red. And I'm like, I really like that red, but... was That that was the one, right? Yeah. Okay. And so he was like, oh, yeah, for sure. Like, we'll just throw a plate on it. He walks up to the one in the showroom, puts the plate on, <laughs> and they were, were the you just like drove it out. And were, I was like, were you just like, no way? I felt really cool. I was like... Oh. Yeah, yeah, this car's for me, boys. Yeah, and the guy was like, oh, yeah, I wanted you to drive the cool one. And I, I thought like, it was the same way with, with, with the DBS, because um, that car... Granted, when we got there, it was sitting outside... 
but that car was always baby kept in the showroom. Yeah. When when like in, in the previous days. So what what exotics have you driven? Oh, if any. Driven? Uh the I don't know if you would call the AMG GT an exotic. I mean yeah. I've driven that. Uh I don't think I've driven any. Okay. Well, if it, if you want to count driving driving them across the lot at AMS, I drove the, one of the, one of their twin turbo six speed R eights. Really? Yeah, I've also driven the Queen off off the trailer into the, the shop. Queen? Yeah, they're like three thousand wheel horsepower drag full drag car. Jeez. Yeah, that was an experience. I drove like a- that is one of the, the most vivid car memories I will I will have for the rest of yeah. my life. Oh, for sure. Because you're like, let me tell you, there you think you know what it's like to get into a race car. Then you actually get into a race car. Yeah. It's a different world. Dude, you... So, I get in this seat. It, it, the driver of that car is, is smaller than me. He's like maybe 5'8", five, 5'9". Five, I could be wrong. I'm sorry, Hag. Um, the seat is super tight. You close the door and it has um, the the uh, plexiglass window. So, nothing comes down. Right. Everything's fixed in there. I mean, the entire interior is stripped. Um, you, you you take the steering wheel off of the roof. You You put it on. You hit the button once to prime the pumps and everything. Then you hit the button again. And then because it has um, the, the exhaust vents in front of the front wheel, it, it roars into life and the whole car is just shaking. Yeah. And this was during the summer, so it was like 100 plus degrees in there and rising quick. And you, dude, I, it's so, I, looking back at it now, it's so hard to think about. I was actually in that car. Yeah. Holy fuck. Yeah. And the way the GTR drives, you you know how it, how it creeps away, right? Yeah. Like like a normal torque converter automatic, with the gearing in the queen, like you get off the brake, it creeps, but it creeps a lot faster. Hmm. It's and it has no power steering either, no power steering. Wow. Yeah. So I think we're gonna start to wrap up as we're in an hour and a half. Okay. Um. Final question. So I used to ask people in the back. Back when it was called something else. Um, I'm not going to name names. I used to ask him, if you had unlimited money, what Mazda would you build? Okay. So I'm gonna, just going to switch it. Unlimited money to build a car. Build a car. Build, or you could buy a car. If you just had okay. unlimited money and you just think a Koenigsegg is perfect off the showroom, get that. Oh. But, like, if you want to, I don't know, LS swap a Winnebago or something... <clears throat> Oh, dude, that's so tough. Like, that's equivalent to asking me what's your dream car. I have, yeah, I yeah, have, yeah. I have a list. What's of the first car that comes to mind then? McLaren F1. Really? McLaren F1, hands down. Um, but not the GTR or the long tail variants. It has to be the road, like the actual road car variant, like Jay, like Jay Leno has. Why? Because that car was built to be a road car first. Okay. Well, that's false. It's a race car chassis put on the road. But that was meant to be the ultimate driver's car. Right. That's what I love about it. And right. I'm all about a driver's car. Right. So that is like my wet dream of a car. Right. A s- you got to get it six personally. Point- you got to get an orange. No. I'd rather no? have it. No. I wouldn't get it. In- That's the color. I know, but I would probably have it in like a very, very light blue. Like 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 a like a, um, a silver light blue mix. Yeah. Um, but there's something about having a BMW 6.1 liter V12, you sitting in the freaking middle. Yeah. Of the that's car. That's crazy. The transmission having to warm up first, but when it's warm, it feels like a freaking rifle bolt, and the car weighing under three thousand pounds. It's six hundred like twenty horsepower. Yeah. Yeah. What's not to love? And oh, and, and no driver aids. Yeah. Like, what's not the freaking love about that? Like, I get excited just thinking about that. Like, I'm jumping in my seat right now, Zach. The camera isn't capturing it, but... McLaren F1, yes, yeah, please. He's actually physically shaking, guys. I almost think he's convulsing. Um, so, ending it up, where can people find your work? Where can people contact you? What, what, what? Shout out whatever you want. So, my main source, my main uh, platform to, to, post, to post my... Uh, my work on is my Instagram. My Instagram is mgde underscore visuals. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm approaching 500 followers, which is why I kind of like when you said kind of like successful in in, you know, in photography. I'm just like, hey, really? Um, or you can also find me on Facebook. My personal page is Max Evans, um, and my uh, page for uh, photography is also Max Evans. Okay. So I think you recently started up the Facebook page, right? I did. I started that just after New Year's. 
Okay, yeah, because I remember getting the invite mm-hmm. to like it. So yep. yeah, definitely go check them out on that M D G E M G D E M G M G D E D E. Those are my four initials. Underscore visuals. four initials. Do you have two mm-hmm. middle names? Mm-hmm. Oh, I don't know. Uh, visuals on Instagram. Um, you ever considered YouTube? I have. Never really got. I've never really known what to do with it though, because like, it's so saturated right now with car content and vloggers. I'm just like. Yeah, it sucks. All right, thank you guys so much for watching. (laughs) (laughs) Take care. Peace out, guys.